and welcome back to the Using Ubuntu series part 4. Now today I'm going to look at more advanced applications and how to install them, how to get them going and what makes these applications better than the ones that come pre-installed on Ubuntu. Now, the applications that I'm going to describe today are ones that are all available through the Ubuntu Software Center. So I'm not going to cover the installation because I'm sure most of you are familiar with how to install applications through the Ubuntu Software Center. But basically you just search for the key term that I'll bring up for each application, hit the install button and you're away. No worries at all. Okay, let's start out with graphics. Now I've installed GIMP. Now GIMP is an advanced image editor that's raster based and most people compare it to the open source equivalent to Photoshop. The only thing that holds GIMP back as far as functionality with Photoshop is that it doesn't support all of Photoshop's plugins. But apart from that, it's an excellent tool and if you're doing anything to do with graphic design or photo manipulation or anything to do with like that, you really should give GIMP a go. Under Office, I've installed Abbey Word and GNumeric. Now, Again, I've explained these in other videos, but basically I like these applications better because they have better integration with the GTK theme. They also provide just the same functionality that OpenOffice does, but they're completely free applications. They don't have Oracle branded all over them, and they're just as functional, and they're slightly simpler and not quite as cluttered as their OpenOffice counterparts. Under sound and video, I installed, I've installed a lot. Arista Transcoder. Now, Arista Transcoder is a wonderful program. Basically what it does is you can put a source here, like such as a DVD or a file, or your integrated webcam, and it'll convert that video file into a certain format suitable for either your computer, a DVD player, Nokia N-Series, Sony PlayStation Portable, Sony PS3, web browser, Apple iPhone, iPad, etc, etc, etc. It's absolutely marvelous. You select the file, you add to queue, and away it goes. Also under sound and video, I've installed Audacity, and now Audacity is an advanced audio editor, and anybody who does any sort of audio work would probably be already familiar with Audacity, as it is available on Mac and PC. Also, I've installed the Banshee Media Player. Now, Banshee is quite an advanced media management. What it basically does better than Rhythmbox is it does better cover art support. It supports for things like audiobooks and video support and you can see it's picked up the videos and it plays them inside the uh, inside the interface which is pretty cool. It has all those play it has all those playlist supports it has time for Amazon MP3, the Miro podcast guide, internet archive, last FM. It's a great application and only recently it does have now support for the sound menu as well. So what you want to do if you want to enable that, you go tools, sorry, you go edit preferences extensions and then you just tick the sound integration menu for Banshee. So you close out of that and you can see now under the sound menu you can see there's Banshee playback controls. Now you might want to restart Banshee though because sometimes it plays up just the first time. So Banshee is a wonderful application. You can see the artwork here. You can select multiple albums and shuffle them, play through them. I just find it an easier interface to understand. I'd say it's more similar to something like iTunes and I think people might get along with it a bit easier. It also has very smart import management. Uh, you can import files or, or folders, but you can also in, import iTunes Media Player and from Rhythmbox. So if you've got a database from one of those two applications, it'll import straight from that and not have to go looking for your files, which is pretty cool. Next, let's talk about Cheese Webcam Booth. Now, this is a fantastic application. You can apply effects, and it's much like the iPhoto Booth uh, for Mac. So, also you'll want to install OpenShot Video Editor. Now, OpenShot Video Editor is a very competitive video editor and I would compare it to iMovie for the Mac which is saying something because it's much more powerful than the Windows Movie Maker. It can, can do advanced effects such as chroma key, it can do, it's got bucket loads of um, effects and transitions and uh, it's got an interface that's very easy to understand, it's very simple, you drag and drop your files in place them on the timeline, they will automatically snap, you can trim them up, you can you can apply slow motion or color distance, distort, echo, freeze, gamma, you name it, you can do it. And it really doesn't present much of a challenge as far as your usability goes. It has many, many render profiles, you can 
rend you can render to DVD device or the web and under web it does have support for YouTube high definition which is wonderful I can't recommend OpenShot enough and I think it's I think it, I think it's an essential for every modern desktop and that just about covers the basics. Also, I would recommend that you install a different web browser. Now, I think Firefox is great, and I think most people think Firefox is great, but if you want a browser that's slightly faster and it's a bit more into the future, then you're looking at Chromium Web Browser. Chromium Web Browser is the open source equivalent to Chrome, which is where Google Chrome, the Google Chrome project comes from. So if you go into the Software Center and install the Chromium Web Browser, um, you get a slightly faster internet experience and it ties in better with HTML5 and things like that. That's until Firefox 4 comes along and blows our pants off. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Evolution Mail and Calendar is an okay application. I'd, I'd, I'd be fine with just leaving it there. If you wanted to install something a bit more familiar like Thunderbird, go right ahead. There are literally thousands of applications that can double up on the functionality that comes pre-installed with Ubuntu and the key to open source software is finding the best software that works for you. There is bucket loads of games, there are bucket loads of browsers, just look at all these browsers. So you can go through and just pick out the one that you like the best, see which one works for you the best and use it and that's the best thing about open source software. So go right ahead and enjoy your Ubuntu install. I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos. You've now got a fully functional desktop which can compete with anything like Mac or Windows 7 as far as functionality and also the pre-installed applications, the looks, the speed and who can argue with a 10 second boot up. Well that'll be all from me and remember that the more you use an operating system the more you're going to learn how it works. Now, there are many tutorials out there of how to add PPAs, how to add additional repositories that can bring you more software, so I'm not going to cover that, but basically you've got a good standpoint now. You can do more than basic functionality on your desktop. You can browse the web, you can create videos, you can organize all your photos, you can upload them to Facebook, you can chat, you can organize your iPod, and you can create office documents like you wouldn't believe. So I think that's all the essentials, and we'll see you next time.